Shalom. Call Kalayim La Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shem, Rakak Radash, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule and teach well, and the sincere Shalom to 144,000 one third. Now, the title of this blessing is going to be The End of This World Will Indeed Be Doomsday. Now, in the background, you see this uh, movie poster. Where it says doomsday, mankind has an expiration date. Now, doomsday, the day of doom, if you will, will not be the end of so-called humanity. All right, there's still going to be humans. Humans are going to dwell on the planet Earth forever. Now, you will have certain uh, races of human, or a certain race, which are the Edomites, will be have an expiration date. Now, ironically enough, all you see is pretty much Edomites uh, in this poster. Now, in this movie, I'm not going to spoil too much. I'll just give you a, the plot, the synopsis of the movie. It's a virus that breaks out in Scotland. And it turns people somewhat into zombies. They're not exactly the typical crazy cannibal running after you type zombies they're a little bit a little bit different but the same baseline of what a zombie does right and they cut off scotland they put a whole entire barrier warships everything around scotland and the virus leaks out into the great britain and there's no vaccine or i'm not going to go too deep into it with that, I'm gonna just stop right there. So they have to go into this apocalyptic wasteland to get uh, a cure because the people inside somehow survived the virus. Because the virus does multiple things; it doesn't just turn people straight into zombies. It, it has a a whole um process, and I find that very uh I find that very ironic in a way because I watched another movie called Pandemic. 2016 and this movie is called doomsday 2008 in the pandemic movie it came out in 2016 and it had a very similar plot line as, as doomsday right it had a, a virus with different stages and then the final stage if you pretty much survive you turn into a zombie very 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 uh strange right very uh similar now let's dive dive into these these scriptures because the heavenly father is definitely going to bring in doomsday. This is 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. It's very short. Okay. Pray without ceasing. And that even though it's only 3 words that is a very powerful scripture. Pray without ceasing. We're supposed to pray every day. All right? Because the Heavenly Father is about to bring total mayhem to this planet Earth. And only a select few will be able to escape. This is 2 Ezra 7 and 43. But the day of doom shall be the end of, the, of this time. And the beginning... Of the immortality for to come, wherein corruption is past. So the day of doom is the end of society, how it's ran now. The rulership, so to speak, right? The rulership. um, Because the, the rulership right now is Esau. Esau's end is doomsday. Why do you think these devils like to use that, that phrase so much? Where do you think Esau got the term... Uh, <laughs> Where do you think where do you think Esau got the term uh doomsday from? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that these devils got it from second Ezra seven and forty forty three. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. So these devils aren't uh ignorant to certain things in the scriptures, right? They understand certain things in these scriptures. <laughs> This is 2nd Ezra 8 and 1. And he answered me saying, The Most High hath made this world for many, 
but the world to come for few. And that's talking about these devil society, the wicked society, and then the righteous society when Jacob is in rulership. And when Jacob is in rulership, uh, the Israelites won't be shoulder to shoulder with nobody but other Israelites. All the heathen will be subservient um, to the Israelites. And you Edomites are going to be done away with. A whole nation gone. Now let's go to this right here. This is 2 Ezra 6 and um, 9. Or Esau is the end of the world. Right? The day of doom. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth immortality. And, and the ending of this movie is very, <laughs> the ending is very funny. Because I'm going to spoil it, I'm going to spoil it a little bit. At the end of the movie, the virus uh, got into Great Britain. And society was pretty much screwed. Society was over. The, it was going to spread worldwide. And um, so the chick, the chick, they had a woman <laughs> doing all this uh, in this masculine role, right? And that's the devil for you. And, and this woman, she realized that it, it, it's done for. Like, society is screwed. Basically... This apocalyptic wasteland that she was in would be better for her to be there than to survive um, in, in, in any other part of the world. So what she did was is that she defeated the leader um, of, the, of, the, of this, uh, this group. She defeated the leader and then she became the leader at the end. <laughs> See, she defeated the leader. And she became the leader. That's very similar to how uh, these devils are going to go down. Let's go to Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take, take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So, Yahweh Shai with his legions, all right? The Elohim, the Israelites, his warriors, will take over the earth. And what? What's going to happen? They're going to rule the earth forever. There's not going to be no overthrow. No, <laughs> Esau and these heathens aren't going to be uh, in the shadows plotting how to take us down. They're, they're, they're thinking up a, a master plan <laughs> to, to, to slaughter the Israelites again. All right, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Let's go to Psalms 23. Actually, no, let me let me go to Revelation 6. Revelation 6 and Revelation 6 and 1. And I saw with the lamb open and I saw when a lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard it was where the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown, and was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. And that's how shy, how shy is going to put in work on you, on you heathens, in particular, uh, you Edomites, man, Isaiah 63. Right now, I'm gonna end this off. I'm gonna end this off in in Romans, Romans eight, Romans eight, and and seventeen, uh, verse sixteen. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. So you're gonna have Israelites just because someone <laughs> looks like an Israelite doesn't mean that they're Israelite. The Spirit. The spirit of a person truly determines if they're an Israelite or not. And to, in order to truly bring out their spirit, you have to read them what? The gospel, the good news is verse 17. And if children, then hares, hares of the Most High, and joint hares with Hamashiach. And if so, be that we suffer with him, 
that we may be also glorified together. Like how what Shai said, you have to bear that cross, man. Um, verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be, compa to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And that glory that's going to be revealed in us in the sh is, is, the, is the truth. Right, spiritual power, which is a part, which is the truth, right? That's the second covenant. This, everything we're doing is, is pretty much leaning up to Yahweh Shah's return and the second covenant. If you just want a short summary, <laughs> it leads up to the, of course, the, the mercy, the mercy, the salvation, the, the save, the, the save, to be saved from judgment. But it, the end goal is, is is to be with Yahweh Shah and get the second covenant, man. That's that's which leads to the kingdom. And with that, I say, Shalom, Adawan, Ratazad, this was edifying, Shalom.